Hey guys, this is Vadim with Max Tech, and in this video, we are doing something very, very interesting, and you guys really wanted to see this. So right here, we have the modded M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. The way we modded this MacBook Air is by grabbing a couple of thermal pads and placing them onto the M1 chip's heat sinks to get some extra performance, and to our surprise, it actually worked. So in this video, we're gonna compare these two, but we're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're not only gonna be comparing the performance, but we're also testing the battery life, and we're gonna check the temperatures of the bottom of the case, because those thermal pads are gonna heat it up more on the MacBook Air. As you can see, we have 100% battery life on both of these, and we're gonna be doing a bunch of testing, going through a bunch of real world tests and benchmarks to see if it's actually worth just getting the air and doing the thermal pad mod instead of just paying the extra 300 bucks for the M1 MacBook Pro. So now that we're at 100% battery life on both of these, let's dig right into it. The first test we're gonna run is of course Geekbench 5, the CPU test to show you guys the difference because the MacBook Air is clocked a little bit lower, of course, because it does not have a fan. The MacBook Pro with the fan is able to clock a little bit higher and get a little bit better speed, so let's test this out. And there we go, we got our scores, and this is actually pretty funny. The MacBook Air is actually scoring higher in terms of multi-core score, 76.33 compared to 76.12. Now that is within a margin of error, so they're actually basically the same, no difference there, so we're gonna have to move on to more serious real-world stress tests. But before we do that, I do wanna run Metal, the graphics test, to see how big of a difference there is, because this is the base MacBook Air with the seven-core GPU compared to the eight-core GPU in the MacBook Pro. So let's just quickly run this. Here we have the graphics scores, and as you can see, 19,000 for the MacBook Air, 21 and a half, for the MacBook Pro, that's about what you're getting for the extra GPU core. Now let's finally get into the Cinebench R23 stress test. This is basically gonna max out the CPUs for a full 10 minutes and we're gonna make it even more interesting because I have a Seek thermal camera right here. I'm gonna plug it into my iPhone and I'm gonna take some temperatures while these tests are going. I'm gonna check the top of the keyboards and I'm gonna flip them over and check the bottoms to see how much more temperature this thermal pad mod adds to the MacBook Air. So with that said, let's hit start. Now just for fun, I wanna take some initial readings with this thermal camera. We're not even one minute into the test. We've got 28 degrees Celsius on the MacBook Air's keyboard. Moving over to the MacBook Pro, we have a hot spot of 27 degrees Celsius. So it is staying a little bit cooler right now. Just hit 28, so let's see how they heat up. Now that it's been seven minutes, I wanna take another reading. Looks like we're sitting at 40 degrees Celsius on the MacBook Air on the keyboard, 37 degrees, 38, on the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro is staying a little bit cooler because of that fan. And now let's flip these over and check the bottom case. All right, now this is a huge difference, guys. 49 degrees Celsius on the bottom of the MacBook Air. We actually have a hot spot right here on the table. Look at that, 37 degree hot spot on the table. Here, 28 degree hot spot and the MacBook Pro is 33 degrees Celsius. So that's 33 compared to 49. All right. Yeah, it's, it's hot. <laughs> it's definitely more hot. Wow, so I can see how you probably wouldn't want this on your lap with this thermal mod. So that's the one downside, but luckily it is reversible. Just take those pads right out. The 10 minute test is now finished and this is just insane. We almost have the exact same score. 7708 for the MacBook Air modded, 7745 for the MacBook Pro. I cannot believe it's performing almost the same because without the mod, the MacBook Air only gets around 6,700 points. You're getting a huge 20% gain with the thermal pad mod. And by the way, if you didn't watch how we did that, definitely watch that video because this type of performance is crazy. And now let's move on to our first real world test. This is our very own Max Tech benchmark using Xcode for programming. Now you can find this by simply Googling it and downloading it and running it on your machine. I have it loaded through terminal. 
I have a code to run it on both, so let's do it. As you can see, it is now running through the terminal on both of these machines, so I'm very curious to see the difference in programming performance between these two with that thermal mod. All right, the test is done, and I don't know if you guys can see from that top cam, but we have 133.6 seconds for the MacBook Air, and 132.3 seconds for the MacBook Pro. That's very interesting because our 16 gigabyte version of the MacBook Pro, not this one, this one's eight, that one finished it in 120 seconds. But seeing it here, it's actually only like a second off. So the performance of this MacBook Air is really impressive. I think it used to take around 137 seconds, before this mod, so that's great. And now with that, let's move on to some Final Cut Pro video editing tests, and we're gonna start it off with Bruce X. Now I fully expect the MacBook Pro to be faster because this is very graphics intensive, and the MacBook Pro does have an extra GPU core, but let's see if we can actually get better performance out of the MacBook Air. Got the settings loaded up, I got my stopwatch right here, so let's export. The test is finished and it looks like we have around 24 seconds for the MacBook Pro and just under 30 seconds for the MacBook Air. So it's not quite as fast, but of course it is lacking that one GPU core. Let's move on to a more serious test. And now moving on, we have our standard five minute 4K H.264 clip export. Now this kind of footage is the most common footage that YouTubers use. So we're gonna export this five minute clip and see the differences. Now I don't expect that big of a difference because this type of codec is limited by the hardware encoders. And of course they both have the M1 chip with very nice new encoders. So let's go ahead and hit export. All right, we're getting close to being finished and these are neck and neck. This is crazy. Oh, the MacBook Air popped up first. What is going on? That's crazy. Basically three minutes and two seconds for the MacBook Air and the Pro was literally a split second behind. I cannot believe that the Air with the thermal mod just beat the MacBook Pro in this export. That is crazy. Now let's go ahead and move on to HEVC. That's a different codec. And this time we're gonna be stabilizing a one minute HEVC clip, All right? This is moving very fast. What's gonna finish first? Oh, look at that, they're basically the same. It was literally just around 10 seconds on both of these, so I don't know. I'm not really seeing much of a downside to this MacBook Air so far, it's doing very well. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. Right here I have loaded up an HEVC clip on both of these. It's a one minute clip. It's 10 bit instead of eight bit, so it's gonna be a little bit more tough, and it's 60 FPS as well. All right guys, this is weird because the MacBook Air is slightly ahead of the MacBook Pro. It does not make any sense. All right, we're almost done. I'm gonna wait for that pop up in the corner. Oh, same time. Same exact time on both of these. One minute and 12 seconds. This is crazy because the MacBook Air used to always be behind in these Final Cut tests. I'm starting to feel like we just converted this MacBook Air into a MacBook Pro without a fan with just the thermal pad mod. This is just crazy. Enough messing around, it's time to bring in the big guns. This is 4.5K Red Raw. It's a one minute clip and as you can tell, it's pretty tough to run. We're getting dropped frames. It's stuttery because this is really tough footage to run. So we're gonna go ahead and export it and compare the speeds. All right, this is just about, there you go. That's the MacBook Pro finished and the MacBook Air is lagging behind a little bit. And there you go, the MacBook Air is now finished. So we got two minutes and 36 seconds for the MacBook Pro and two minutes and 47 seconds for the MacBook Air. So it's just 11 seconds slower. Now I do wanna mention that this test was completely maxing out the graphics, so the MacBook Pro is getting the advantage of the extra GPU core. Now this makes me wonder, if you go with the MacBook Air and you pay for the upgrade to get the eight core GPU, what if it's gonna have the exact same speed? That would be awesome because it seems like the thermal pad mod is not allowing it to throttle like it used to before that mod, so that's great. Let's take this up another notch and do the ultimate video editing test. This right here is 8K red raw footage, and as you can see, 
they can barely play it because it's just, it's overkill, it's insane. So we're gonna export this. Wow, that took forever, but we finally have our scores. For the M1 MacBook Pro, we got 20 minutes and 20 seconds. And for the modded M1 MacBook Air, we have 23 minutes and basically 40 seconds. So it's around three minutes and 20 seconds slower than the M1 MacBook Pro. So considering that it has a seven core GPU, that's actually not bad. And now with video editing finally finished, I wanna do one more test for all of you photo editors out there. This is Lightroom Classic, and I wanna mention that it's the Intel x86 version running using Rosetta. It's not updated for Apple Silicon, and I have it open right here on both of these machines. I have 50 raw 42 megapixel photos, and we are going to export them and see how long it takes. As you can see, the CPUs are fully maxed out and 100% load on both of these machines, and so far, they're looking to be neck and neck. Guys, the MacBook Air is winning, and this is totally blowing my mind. It is almost done. There you go, the Air just finished. The Pro is still going. I can't believe it. It's almost done. I actually hear the fan. I hear the fan blowing right now, that's crazy. There you go, the MacBook Pro just finished. I cannot believe this just happened. We have two minutes and 37 seconds for the MacBook Air, and we have two minutes and 54 seconds for the MacBook Pro. That's a 17 second difference. I have no idea what's going on. They're both using the same version, the same test. The Air finished sooner. This does not make sense because the Pro has a fan. So that's just insane. It seems like we've turned our $1,000 MacBook Air into a $1,300 MacBook Pro with that thermal pad mod that is absolutely mind-blowing. So there you guys go. That was all the testing and I've got to say I am extremely impressed and I did not expect a simple mod like that, $30 for those thermal pads on Amazon. I did not expect to get that big of a performance jump from a simple thermal pad mod. So if you guys have not seen that tutorial video on how to do it yourself, definitely check it out. Now the only downside is that the bottom of the case is gonna get more hot. And if that is gonna bother you, it's totally reversible. Just open up the case, take those pads right out and you're back to normal. Hold on, there is one more thing and that is the battery life comparison. When we started this video, both of them were at 100%. It was 11.48 and now it is 1.59. That's basically two hours and 11 minutes of recording. So let's check out the battery life difference. The MacBook Pro is at 67%, that's actually really good, and the MacBook Air is at 52. Now if you calculate that out, the MacBook Pro is getting 28% better battery life throughout all of this testing, so that is the main advantage if you wanna spend $1,300 and get the MacBook Pro, but if you already have the MacBook Air or you don't wanna spend that much on the Pro, just go with the $1,000 MacBook Air. We have links down in the description below and go ahead and try out the thermal pad mod because as you saw in this video, you get very, very impressive results. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, go ahead and tap the like button and click the circle of bucks to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.